It's, it's Yugi. It's heroic. It's a lot of words. And this game's about to begin. Yeah, baby. Dreamhack Masters. Day one and match one. It's what we've all been waiting for. And we're straight into the action, Harry. We're not waiting around. Heroic. Seaside start on their map. Pick its train. Uh, with Astralis in the outer yard, only three here. Dupree's going to find a first kill device. Dinked on the inner bomb site, but that bomb is already get planted on outer. We still have Astralis stacked on the wrong site. Will they try and deal with this lurk of testers? They are at least getting the kills on A, but the bomb's been planted and the retake is on with no kit. Oh, yikes, the, the Tessas and Nico left in this two on five. They are going to be hard pressed to get back into it. Tessas, the only man remaining. And even then, it only lasts for a matter of seconds. Astralis, they're going to find themselves the pistol around here. They get this locked in. My voice is broken twice in one sentence. And they're going to go one and oh up to begin trade. Yeah, and Yugi with two kills, best player in Denmark. We all knew it, Harry. This isn't a surprise to anyone. But uh, no, of course, it, it is so exciting to see this guy in this team, right? After after a good bit of time, you know, in Heroic, for example, dropping off for a bit, reappearing in Heroic, going to North. This guy, I mean, this guy's been everywhere. He's been all over the scene. So to finally see Yugi play in, in literally the best team in the world, the best team in this country, it's got to feel pretty good for Yugi. And uh, the pressure is definitely on for him to perform as well. So let's see how he does. 1-0 lead for Astralis, Heroic. They're on a bit of an eco here into that B-bomb site, playing off of the bonus provided by that bomb card. And they're looking for another one inside as well. Zipex with the molly, denies it early, calls for a rotation, and Device will be here to cover up. But with Alta being completely empty and silent right now, Astralis have no reason to be worried. They know Heroic are likely stacked up inside a B looking for this plant. Yeah, so that'll be heroic, stacked up outside of B and probably looking for this plant to <laughs> go if I had to guess. They might just uh, they might just hinge on your every word exactly in this round. They're setting up outside of the B bomb site and well there's this guy, name's device, pretty uh, pretty cool dude. He's got this uh, M4 looking to do some damage in through the smoke. It's actually gonna be Zipex doing the bulk of it, and forget I even mentioned device, because Zipex there we go. He does get it eventually. Four kills on the board for him. And Astralis, they get themselves that conversion. They deny a bomb plant at B and they handle it all amicably. So they're feeling pretty good about that one, Hugo. Yeah, and for good reason. But Heroic, no worry, right? Bomb plant and the pistol, and they saved extra as well, so they can buy up in the third. And full rifles for them as well. Astralis are still running essentially a bonus round with a couple of SMGs in play, and the AWP is delayed. I think for me, that's the big question. Is who's main AWPing? Are we going to see Yugi given that gun, or is Device going to manhandle it away from him? Uh, I actually don't know. So, yeah, you know, even even the question of, like, double AWP, like, how do Astralis want to use Yugi inside of this team? Where do they want to put him? And I think a lot of those questions, at least are going to get answered today. And that's why I'm even happier that we have like a trained CT side to start, right? No better place to bring out multiple AWPs in this map. And Astralis, well, we're waiting for that. Oh, that's a bad timing spot. Device looks upper. There are two players there, but he's just peeled off as Tessens clears the corner. So now it's not the bomb, but Heroica looking to put a bit of a fake on this B bomb site. Device is going to spot it. He's about to rotate out of Heroica throwing their full utility and trying to take, retake May. Oh, Tessas has gotten into B, and while all this is going on, Stown just still selling this uh, this little fakeru into the A bomb site. Now that he's slowed right down, actually, he's available to come in late on this flank. And Astralis, they don't even like they're attempting this one. This is already the Ooh. <laughs> this is already the save, or at least it's meant to be. And uh, well, Stout is hunting down a couple of these guys, but that should be his kind of fragging journey coming to a close any moment now. Dupree should be able to get away with the MP9, but he'd probably like something a little bit better than that. There are some other weapons dropped about the place that he's going to try and retrieve. Heroic, though, they waste absolutely no time in getting their first round on the board here and now. Of course, the attempt at the bonus from Astralis, and Hugo, I have to agree with you, it did feel a little bit unfortunate there with Device's info peak and upper just being mistimed to actually spot the B play there. Could have been a very different round if they'd had just one more man at B, but that kill comes in at the site, they lose it, then they lose a man on the lurk from Stown, and that's it, the round's out the window. There's nothing you can do if you're Astralis. You're three on five out of the gate. Yeah, Heroic, a nice little fake execute there, and they're going to reap the rewards of it. So full rifles once again, and as far as I've upgraded their bonus buy, so level playing field now into the fourth round of this map. 
Again, the solo in a play, and Heroic at least want to push the Zipex back early. And, and that's a good way to just default if you're Heroic on this map. A bare minimum, force Zipex to an uncomfortable position, because that will allow rotation from Astralis in towards B. And, well, right now, that's not going to be the case. The Discus kill Bora, and right now, Astralis are very hungry, hankering for fights, pushing the perimeter. Dupri and the Pop Dog, he's going to get dropped onto. Lots of damage, but Nico getting away with the kill. Astralis have the smoke down on Ivy, and a spam's going to hit the vice down low. He returns the favor, but no one's come out well uh, well here for either side. Heroic are going to decide to leave that position and go back towards the B halls. Two players above pop about to drop. Uh, Magisk, he just mows them down. Nice and easy stuff. That's going to leave Heroic in a real predicament. Two players, very low health in a two on four against Astralis. What Acadian and Stout even do now? Two on four, and both players very, very low on HP. They are looking really for any sort of mistake that Astralis are going to make. And you keen listeners out there, you'll note that mistakes in Astralis aren't really two words that go hand in hand. So let's see if any are made. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. There's 20 seconds left. Time is... Also a problem for Heroic, so this is just going to be the save. Now, you know, with holding on to these two guns, they still have an investment coming in the future. They've still got another go at it. Thus far, it kind of feels like we have yet to see, like, a, like a full back-and-forth round of Counter-Strike. Like, all of these rounds have just been decided based on the yeah. first few kills that have come in. So I kind of can't wait to see what Heroic or Astralis have planned for the mid-round, because right now it has just been, yeah, we won the opening fight. We win the round. And <laughs> yeah, I, I, on top of that as well, the one round of Rocket One was a really nice fake, a fake execute. And, you know, it, it forced Astralis out of it. They realized that they had, you know, ha the, the play was too good. They had to give it up. They had to play save, and they couldn't retake it. I want to see another one of those from Heroic. How many intricate fakes, how many strategies, how many executes do they have out of the gate? It's been some time since we've seen this team. And of course, with Hunden behind them, I mean, this is a really dangerous Heroic roster now. So. Yeah, let's see what they've got moving forward. Another rifle round, like you said, brought up around that save. It's a double setup with Device covering Yugi. The first AWP in play, it's on Device. Good to see Yugi gone very early. Device with an uncharacteristically missed shot, and that will leave his teammate in a very, well, dead situation. I mean, if Device doesn't hit the kill, Yugi is dead. So that's simply what's happened. Heroic have a man advantage. Device having to concede Ivy early and rerouting through old bomb instead. Astralis, in the meantime, look to take other areas of the map and Pop Dog gets prodded, it gets poked. But you'll notice Heroic are grouping outside of B for an execute, a safe decision, knowing Astralis are likely to have only one in the outside, uh, in the inside site rather, and combined with the fact that they have a lurk up Ivy in the form of Stown, he can come in on a bit of a backstab. Let's see what Stown can do here. And he's going to be a pretty important player as this push is coming in over here towards the B site. Device, he is going to turn heads there by opening up with the first kill. Zipex now taking a bit of a peek in as well. Doesn't see anyone the first time around, but now through the Ooh. smoke, Borum does find himself getting deleted. While they are ready for a man wrapping in through Ivy, it's still Stown finding the kills. This actually leaves a three on three, and this now has the added pressure of a lurk, spurring Astralis deeper into the bomb site. They're trying to pick up the pace. They're trying to close the distance here because they know eventually Stan is going to be there behind enemy lines, but they've dealt with everyone in the front line, and that only leaves you with this one man. He's too far away. The round is over. Some teams really mess that up, and I'm so glad to see Astralis don't. So many teams will either focus either you know one individual player to deal with that lurk, which cuts down the amount of players you have retaking, or, or stop the entire retake to focus on the back line. But the issue is with playing like that, Stan can delay as long as he wants, and if his team aren't getting the contact, Stan's not going to move out of spawn. Astralis go, well, he's on his own. Let's just leave him. Let's kill everyone else. And they chase down Heroic on the site. They tap the bomb. They force a fight. They kill everyone. And then they go, well, the last dude is in the other side of the map. He's in our spawn. So let's just stick the defuse. Excellent round for Astralis. Not falling for any shenanigans from Heroic. Knowing that flank is coming through and just avoiding it as they should. 4-1 lead here on the CT side. It may be Heroic's pick, but Astralis are truly looking in control so far. Man, that little, uh, like, data tip. I, don't, I, I can't even think of the word, mate. Data tip, that data definitely tip. Wow, what are you, a robot? The, uh, yeah, man, you know, just give him the old data tip. It's up on the screen. And it reminded me of something from, like, the original Xbox days. That I was work. loving it. It, it was that, pretty maybe? cool. It said that Yugi gets 48, I think it was. I, mean, I, I was too busy mes mesmerized by the <laughs> data tip. But, yeah, like, yeah, pretty cool, I guess. Here we go. Heroic <laughs> coming in with the spy.
Yeah, we got a double up as well. Finally, the moment we've been waiting for. Yuki armed and dangerous with a scope cannon. Uh, and this side of trade is certainly going to bode well for it. He's going to hit a bit of a tag. Tesla's low early. Majisk above the smoke. Not for long. Nico reads it. And Heroica moved very deep into the site. They've actually pressed, uh, pressed Astralis all the way to the back. Dupree's the only guy still left in A. And with him going down after just one, it's left Astralis playing retake on a bomb site. They initially had four at. This is a bit of a predicament. And uh, there's not much I can do about it. Hoping these orbs can pop off in the post plant. Will heroic give them the satisfaction yeah that's it. i mean if there ever was a trial by fire for the double orb set up here now on astralis it's this one yugi and device both with them but they're looking to save they're not looking to go for it uh still really feeling like i have yet to see this double orb uh, do anything it's another one of these rounds where they've tried to bring it out or they've tried to bring it in rather for the first time and uh, the round is just decided immediately on the, the back of the kills that Nico is able to grab on his fast A play. So we're going to have to wait another round to see if this double AWP is all that effective. Because in this one, it's already over. And it's already fallen in favor of Heroic. Yeah, nice fast little execute there from Heroic. A switch up of pace is certainly the solution after a lot of slow rounds where they've just been playing off the back of one kill and grouping for an execute. This one's a little bit spicier, catches Astralis off guard, and now this double orb definitely has to have their work cut out for them uh, as Heroic have one of their own. Kadian board up into this round. He's going to take it towards Inner early alongside Nico, who is leading the charge. Zipex looks a little bit more keen to fight on the ramp this time. He's not moved away, not perturbed by the utility of Heroic and the clear footsteps that there are members above. In fact, there are a lot of members above. Four here, with Borat playing late, he's throwing a flashbang. And Heroic, they expect to just hit this B bomb site, it seems. And again, with them being quiet on A, Astralis, what do they do? They rotate an AWP over. Device and Zipex have still got to have a pretty stellar hold here at B. And actually, as I say that, the bomb's going to start to go back. Suddenly, Heroic, mm. they've decided that they don't really like what they've seen at B. They know that they might have drawn some rotations. Now, do be sure to keep our eye on Zipex. You can see that he's about to potentially aggress into these upper holes. Tessus is holding for the pop dog push. But if Zipex does indeed go aggressive, he will end up getting that information that these halls are clear again. But he's actually backed away from that position. And Heroic now having left this B bomb site all the way back towards T spawn. 30 seconds, setting up outside of A. It's going to fall to the likes of Dupree, Magis, and Yugi to hold down the firing line. Yeah, well, Dupree, the first of which already finding Tessas above the pop dog. That's cut off this split for Heroic. They're all coming from T corner. Magisk has just dropped a smoke in 20 seconds. Heroic, this is a save. There's nothing they can do. Astralis was set up perfectly for this uh, with a double pop dog player uh, plus a man on the E box watching the side of Ivy. That was Yugi with the AWP. Heroic, they just walk into an aggressive setup for Astralis and they're not ready for it. That's that's an unfortunate round for Heroic. I guess they group up in B early, but it's very clear by the utility of Astralis that, that they know Heroic are there, right? Zipix is throwing in Molotovs. He's cycling all his grenades, trying to make sure he can delay as long as possible, and he hasn't even seen anyone yet, so it's more of a read. And Heroic, they just try and go and clear out the area of the map they've lost, hoping that maybe they catch an Ivy push, a T-Con push, and as a result, Astralis, because of that aggression, will have stacked B, but it wasn't the case. They were just 3-2 split, and Heroic walk into the 3. That is going to leave Astralis taking another round and Heroic again want to throw in a bit of a faster approach to this one. Well, Yugi's just been deleted. Ooh. Borup following up. Magisk is here now like trying to save the day a bit. Trying to kind of pick up team spirit in this round. And I'm of course talking about the team spirit of Astralis, not the CIS legends. Magisk down towards Ivy keeping his eye on this location while the rest of the gang now try to take a position to deal with main magic though he's got his head on a swivel oh. and this man is looking like owlboy here he's blowing that head around he's finding kills left and right but finally stan will come in with the trade and now it's device 1v2 up in hand and falling back into the pop dog he's looking for a means to this end of this round stan Eyes sharpened, looking into this A bomb site. Can't spot device, and so device is making pretty good time on this wrap round now. Does find himself over in main. 
And this slowdown from Heroic has given Device all the room he was hoping for. They don't know it. They've tried to play this together. They've tried to group up, but actually, this is exactly what Daddy Device wanted in this 1v2. Yeah, and now time is going to be the problem, Heroic. They might be going B through CT. This is a great call. It's going to be the last place Device expects, but now they reroute down Old Bomb, and that's walking into the path. The Device is on as well. He's about to get the info. They're not going to check it. That's the kill. 14 seconds. Trades out to the AK-47. The bomb on the ground, and Heroic need to get that plant in. Device has a spot, and he knows Stown's likely sticking it. Going to move closer and closer. On top of the train. Stown in the sight, and the jump for Device. Oh, he gets peaked midair, and Stown closes the round. Great work from Heroic. They actually do manage to shut down that one on uh, two on one rather. It looks, if, if anything, favorable for Device at a point in time with that flank coming through. But it's going to be Stown saving this one. Dear, oh dear. Close as they come. Three rounds for Heroic, though, and they're keeping things competitive. And now Astralis starting to lose a little bit of this money. You're going to have to go back to the solo warp. So Yugi, I mean, he had two kills in the pistol round. We've not seen him do anything yet. But we're keeping our eyes on him. Don't you worry. We got a litmus test for Yugi. Figuring out his pH levels as we speak. Oh, he's going to find himself getting mollied out of Ivy. And this actually opens up a potential way in for Heroic. He's still floating around. The bomb is outside of B, though. So these guys in Ivy are nothing more than a little distraction. And now, actually, on the back of seeing Device's AWP ring out over at the B bomb site, this might be a change of strategy from Heroic. However, it's Brains meeting Brawn down in Ivy. And Magisk has come out on top. Kadian on one point of health. And Magisk almost with a double. He has turned Heroic away from this A bomb site. They're still sticking around. They're still looking like they want to go for it. With three players here for Astralis, Magis getting aggressive. Kadian, this should be the end of him, and it is. Kadian has been removed. Borup, Tessas, 2v5 now. You're asking a lot. They're not able to deliver. Borup left all alone. Does at least have himself this bomb, but yikes, man. Didn't even hear the shot from Device. That's how stealthy he was. Six on the board for Astralis. Once again, it's Magis from uh, Old Hell just laying down the pain. Even goes aggressive back into Ivy to chase that kill down. Magis is looking real good right now. You know, he heard the term in-game leader throw it around, but he's interpreted it as leading in-game, which is very much what he's doing right now. 11 and 3, yeah. top in the charts. I mean, without his pesky eye gel telling him, Magis, you can't push Yeah, this. Magis, no, push don't that. go old hell. You're going to die. <laughs> They're coming from both main and Ivy. Don't play there. And Magis, you know, he's loving it right now. Flaves sat at home, not, not telling him what to do, and he's got all this freedom. Look at him go. <laughs> yeah, Astralis in control, but it is still back and forth, right? This game has been actually fairly exciting to start, right? The scoreline may not look good for Heroic, but on the T side of train, this is a good track record so far. They should be happy with this, but again, looking to build. Probably won't be getting a lot done in this round. It's an eco, and with armor behind some of these pistols, they might want to just charge into B, look for this bomb plant. Pretty common occurrence in these low buy rounds. Astralis are playing four outside, and with no rotate uh, player either, Device was pushed up towards Ivy, so he's got a bit of a longer route, but he has begun said route, and moved that AWP over towards B. Every time Heroic have come B, Device has been here, so he's been very, very good at knowing when to come in through this connector, when to assist Zipex inside of B, and I mean, to be fair, it has been pretty obvious, right? When Heroic are going B, they're silent on A. So right now, they're just going to walk into the firing line. Device fires off his orb. Zipix waiting in the middle of the bomb train. Should be able to deny the plant as well, but he's looking to take kills before that. Dropping down, the Deagle pushed up. Borup has found Device. There's another orb coming through Connector. Yugi getting very tagged up. He's careful. Zipix will clean up the job instead. And Astralis should be able to save that secondary orb as well. So seven to three. The Ecos made quick work of no bomb plant for Heroic. And that was kind of a must-have. You can see their money is pretty whack. They would be uh, eco anyway, but and now definitely not buying. So it's going to be Astralis leading a little better. Down's gotten very, very deep on A, and Yugi is not aware of this whatsoever. He's not even taking it into account. Oh dear, Dupree doesn't know. As far as he's aware, Yugi has been holding main. Stown is just an unknown entity right now. 
out in this A bomb site, and he's only armed with a P250, and I think he's worried that they know where he is, but they really don't. Yugi has got absolutely no idea. Ooh, oh, no. Ah, 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 no, no. Out. Ah, they've he's walked past. They missed each other. Dupree, he's behind you. Dupree, I'm talking to you now, my friend. He's behind you. Oh, it's no. Oh, my goodness. How has this happened? What If Yugi makes now, noise, if he scopes, he's dead, and he has no idea. How has he done this? I don't, he doesn't even know he's done this. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. They don't know. No one knows. I don't really know how this is even happened. And here's happened. the issue, Harry. The bomb's coming back. It's oh, going to come back no. to spawn. They're going to go, guys, walk through T-Con. Oh, it's clear. Dear. It is not clear. Dupree is in enemy lines. Not behind them. Inside of them. And he's ready. He's waiting. Unless the bomb goes <laughs> Ivy. How does this happen? Glaive wouldn't have let this happen. <laughs> this wouldn't have happened. But this Look is perfect this. for yeah, Astralis. This is great for Astralis yeah. now. Like, it, it started off looking like it was going to be a problem. Oh, but the they're sound. thinking heroic, like, ha ha ha, clear. Yeah, we're going to. Oh, sound does get Yugi, but Dupree <laughs> on the main push, <laughs> unsurprisingly. <laughs> does get the rest. And, no. Uh, yeah, a bit of an interesting one. Yugi's probably not very happy with how he's just uh, died. Heroic are probably mad at Stown. They're like, Stown, how is he in main? <laughs> you just came out Olaf. How is he there? I don't understand. But uh, Stown's going to be very conf confused when he watches that demo back. He looks up. Dupree walks below him. Funny stuff. Astralis up to eight. That's a great round for them, but not one they can really repeat as uh, they hold commanding lead. Double orb. Continuing, Yugi hit some shots with it in that round as well as they feed the beast inside of main. Where do Heroic want to go now? They're fully armed and kitted in towards B. This is one of their last rifle rounds, right? Right. Assuming they obviously aren't going to pick up any more, uh, which is well, usually a safe assumption playing Astralis. Uh, Heroic are already going to have two buy rounds in this half, or two more. So scary stuff. They definitely need to put a dent in this one. And Astralis are actually allowing them to do so. For the first time on a B hit, Astralis don't rotate device in time. So it's just Hippex here playing very passive, looking to retake. Astralis are not going to be worried about this, but it will at least give Heroic that money they so desperately desire with the bottom half. That's the win in and of itself, if you're lucky enough to be Heroic right now. We'll get this bomb planted and now closing the distance. Device spamming this Tech 9. That's going to give his position away. And Tess says, continuing oh. to go aggressive, actually runs out of ammo. Magis can do pre. They put this back in a good situation for the Astralis side. 3v2 now. Orb still up in the retake. That's going to be in the hands of Yugi. And he's going to have to be instrumental here in this retake. They're holding down these post plots. The Molly burns out for him, and now they know where Kadian resides, but Yugi not able to get the shot off, and now just thinking oh, the wrong yeah. Kadian. He's on it! Kadian's oh. on it! And he just about gets him off. It's going to be heroic. Getting a fourth round up on the board. Kadian wins out that 1v2. And it's close, but no cigar for Astralis. Nice attempt from Yugi. I don't know how the hell that ends up going in the way of Heroic, right? They they really drop the ball with their aggressive play. Um, you know, Tessa's is running out of ammo, uh, going towards CT. Nico gets aggressive, gets a kill. He tries to trade, but Astralis have already come out connector and jumped above the smoke at that point. Nico gets caught, and it all comes down to Kadian. He does put four on the board for Heroic, and as he draws Astralis' money into question, this can this has two results, right? Either Astralis sweep the half here, or Heroic have a really really good T side and, and like to get six seven rounds. That's looking possible with Astralis' money on edge. His grenade hits Kadian. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh again. no! He was. He couldn't even see. Magis, that's not fair. That's not fair, Magis. Come on, you can't do them like that. They're Danish as well. Heroic. Three on five now on the back of Magis, just fully blind, mopping up the pop dog. And here comes Dupree to help out as well. This leaves Stown and Kadian. Two on five in the blink of an eye. Or in Magis' case, you didn't even get to blink. Your eyes are basically closed the whole time. Deary me, how are they going to recover this? Kadian over in main. The bomb is on the back of Stown heading over towards this B site. Kadian's, you know, like teasing with the tip of the AWP a bit, trying to give it away. Dupree, very invested in keeping oh, an eye yes. on this, and he will catch Kadian. So yeah, this would be nuts if Stown does it. But <laughs> I don't know if he's going to do it. 1v5 here required. Here's the audio. Here's the audio falling back. That's something. And actually, no one's watching the pop dog. So a bit of a free kill. But Machis comes from above. Stown kills him. 
Oh dear, a messy one. Luckily, there's only 15 seconds left. Astralis looking to stop this bomb from getting planted. Zipnix doesn't want him to cross to the site. He's going to play at the back of the train, does spot him, and down. Oh, he fakes it out. Zipnix just in the heads of his enemies, rent free. Doesn't even need to push. And even though he does, it doesn't matter. The grenade will finish the job. And even just spotting Z uh, Zip at the back of the site did enough to win the round, right? Because down goes, oh, I can't plant. Zip will rush me. And he just has to fake it. And there we go. Astralis, they close it out with a grenade. Yugi's had. Uh, two grenade kills, one HE, one Molotov in this game. I have been keeping track, yes. Got laser precision eyes on that man. Seeing how he performs for his debut in Astralis. We're still, of course, waiting for S-Tag in Heroic as he is contracted until June, or July rather. So keep your eyes on that later as well. Heroic though, fast play up Ivy. The pistols are out and not for long. The Molotov will make quick work of them. It's a bit of a barbecue as Stown picks up a gun, but he's left again in another ace clutch situation. Yeah, he was able to get it down to the wire last time, but this time around, doesn't fare too well. Picks up the first two before getting traded by device. And so Astralis up 10-4 at this point in time on Heroic's map pick, no less. Magic is just, just looking so good today. Very free, very capable. Two on one in opening duels, five multi kill rounds, 14 frags. He's top of the board, 15 now, rather. So that's what you like to see for Astralis as they look for this commanding first half. Heroic on their last by round, last round of the half. And they set two in towards B early. Does Zip want to make the move up Pop Dog? No. Going to keep things somewhat safe here for Device is on B, but he's getting spammed. Oh, that's the first time Astralis have decided to put an AWP there. And Heroic, they believe it's too good to be true. They shoot the wall, they do a lot of damage to the Device. And with this IV control taking uh, being taken by Heroic, Yugi is watching onto it. So he knows that no one's committed. He knows that no one's gone backtracks, at least yet, for Heroic. And that is valuable in information for Astralis on this B. Now, there's a lot of attention from Astralis over at this A-bomb site right now. They will rotate Zipex on back round, and he's dropped himself a smoke. Down at the ramp, Magisk actually aggressing into main. Strips one from the ranks of Heroic. Stown has gotten out through Ivy, but there should be a man keeping an eye on this. Actually, he's slipped by using that smoke. He's caught a timing Ooh. past Yugi, and will end up taking care of a man at the A site. Now Dupree. Shut down as well. There's only one man alive over inside of B, and with his death, the bomb is now given over to Astralis. Down once again, ask the clutch here for Heroic and another undoable clutch round. It feels like 12 points of health to his name and a 1v3 to 5. Yeah, Stown's had a great half, but he's been left in so many clutches, so many lurks and flanks that Astralis are just ready. Well, Astralis, 11 to 4 at the end of the first half of play. And those Betway odds paint a pretty grim picture indeed. Ooh. And I think justifiably so. This is Heroic's map pick. This is Astralis playing with Yugi in the uh, in the in the seat. And somehow, some way, they're finding themselves in a very, very big lead right here over on the T side now. As they look to try and continue. This rip roaring affair moving into the second half. Kadian set up over here in Pop Dog. There are players up above him. Stralis going to throw some uh, what sounded like decoys down towards the, the Ivy side. Also make a bit of noise and now look to rejoin up with the rest of the guys outside of B. But there is still this double stack for Heroic. A fast rotation available from Kadian as well. They're going to be able to crunch down. Over, we have more than a heavy setup here on the inner site for Heroic and Astralis. Don't know what they're about to walk into, but let's see if they can figure it out. Let's see if they can piece together this puzzle as they go storming down ramp. Quick shot from Tessa takes the first kill at Astralis. They've now figured it out. Not the full, uh, not the full setup, not the full do uh, details and the grisly knowledge that Astralis are walking into a, a full setup. Plant coming through, but it will be denied. And now it is just down to one man. You can deep within the site, but he's past Heroic and he's got a 180 into his own death. That's going to be a round for Heroic. A important pistol picked up that could get them back into this game. Yes, indeed. We get to see the replay of this stellar little sight hold from Heroic. Sweet. And now that pistol round locked in <laughs> for the Heroic side. They're looking to... Uh... 
to right their wrongs and get back into this game. Well, no decision to force over on the Astralis side of things. It's only going to be pistols here. So this should be a bit of a freebie for Heroic. Little double drop down in the pop. And actually, they do get a kill with it. The Glock on Zipex, able to best test it. This is a full Glock crown from Astralis. They've landed a couple more dinks, but this is really where their uh, their good luck, their good time should run dry here. Yes, indeed, Harry. Down on top of the little boxes there, finds Majisk. And just like that, it's a quick clean round for Heroic. Four alive once again. No issue for Heroic, but here's the buy. Here's what we've been waiting for. Astralis in their first rifle round of the half. Uh, you know, Yugi, we saw him uh, slot in quite nicely into that CT side defense, right? Just sitting towards E-Box watching Ivy most of the time with that AWP. Uh, now, where's he going to be on the T side? Where's he uh, leading? Astralis have left the bomb. We did see that be a bit of a problem in the road to Rio, so hopefully someone goes and retrieves that. Majisk will. So, no issue right now for Astralis. Cross towards a pop up for Heroic. They take their spawns and no one can stop them. The AWP is on B and KD, he's fired off a shot. The Jiggle forces a bullet out and this AWP will have to run all the way back now. It's still the only man on this inner site, but that might need to change soon here. And of course, Heroic don't have the info. They don't have the knowledge. They've heard nothing from Astralis in this round. But that, if anything, should also be a big sign as to where Astralis are. It's not convincing enough for Heroic, though, at least not for Cadian, who trades positions going back towards IV. But luckily enough, Heroic do pull a double B rotation here. If Astralis go for a full standard execute, there will be a good hold. But Astralis are actually going to move out of this site, interestingly enough, and do exactly what Heroic did in one of those earlier T rounds, walk all the way back to T-Con, clear out the positions that may have been taken by aggressive CT players, and boy, have a bit positions been taken by aggressive CT players. Look at Cadian. He's in the essentially T-spawn, or has an angle towards it, from Ivy, and Astralis don't have an AWP to combat this, oh, but the, the timing, timing, the timing, the dreaded timing, it bites once again. Heroic, stacked inner, don't know what about what is about to come down. It's down even looking like he's considering this main aggression, and oh dear, Cadian has just fully committed to the B-side rotation through connector. Now he's still going to be available to swing back and forth between the sites. And as this utility comes on over, he finds himself back inside of A. Down trying to hold close to main. We'll put up one onto Yugi. Trade's going left and right, but Kadian not going down without a fight, and that's exactly what he's going to get. Seven seconds. Time is Ooh. the problem. Zipex going to get this bomb down. They're trying to deny it, and it's not blocked for Astralis. Barup comes in and finishes Ooh. things off. Heroic, they put themselves a seventh up on the board. They deny a bomb plant to Astralis. They keep themselves in the driver's seat in this second half. And I think this is where, you know, if you're heroic, if you're looking for anywhere to be bringing the heat, it's right here right now. I think, you know, if you're approaching this game and you're Astralis, obviously having lost Glaive, I think T-side is where you're going to start to see, you know, it, it can start to feel like you're running into a brick wall. And that's where you need an in-depth strat book if you're Astralis, right? Yeah, and, and the big question is, is how is that leading going, right? Obviously, Zonic is allowed to communicate with his team being, uh, this being online. And so, you know, I imagine he's having a decent bit of input in terms of the in-game leading. Uh, mentions that Majis may be doing some of the talking as well inside this team. So I'm excited to see, you know, where that goes, at least for the short term, for the next three months, as Glaive has stood down. And, and whether that has, you know, a, a really bad impact on Astralis, right? Like, obviously, with things continuing online in the current climate, I think that's good. It's a good time for Glade to step down of all times, right? Because it means that it can contribute. And, and hopefully that means, you know, Astralis can still continue to be a dominant force. But this is going to be the test here. Heroic starting to come alive, starting to pull things back. Do Astralis still have uh, it in them? Oh, well, a fast play down through Ivy. Has gotten them close with the pistols. However, utility has kept them in place. The Molotovs has frozen this Ivy push and Ooh. down, removing them through the smoke. Deary me, they're not getting anywhere near this A bomb site. Not with these orbs in play. Pretty much all the kills in this round coming on the back of them. An eighth now on the board for Heroic. And they are slowly but surely grinding their way back into this game, back into this map. 
Obviously just a pissed around for Astralis, but a flawless one from the heroic side. They're going to be feeling very, very good about that. Or back out in the hands of device. Rifles across the board for everyone else. And this is what we're going to see if Astralis running it back again can give it a better go here in round 20. Yeah, far more spread default, at least in this round, right? It's not just Astralis grouping five towards the inner. So let's see the game plan. I imagine it's going to be a bit of a longer round here for Astralis. That's if it's allowed. Borup, very aggressive. Pushed up inside of T-Con. Dupree's watching for this exact play, but he can't clear this corner without being risked uh, to die against this AWP of Cadian. Remember, there are two orbs in play in this round for Heroic, and Astralis do have one on device as well, but he's in a B, at least in the halls. So Stalin has his second orb over on that B site there to battle device. Very heavy T-Con setup with three players close for Heroic. With an Ivy Smoke coming down from Yugi, they're going to have to peel some players away. Tessus looks elsewhere and tries to deal with that with a Molotov, but this is just all a bit of a ruse here for Astralis, who want to hit that inside sight. Remember the orb, it's still here. Nico close in the bomb train as well. A Molotov timed well into the feet of Astralis, but they're going to go as soon as it fades. Here they go, Stown opening up, but there's the equalizer, comes from a man named Dupree, and that's going to open up a route into this B bomb site. However, Tessez dealing with Yugi, trying to come in on this lurk, now leaves Astralis in a three on four. Luckily enough, because Heroic did take some time out of their day to prioritize dealing with Yugi, it does give Astralis Whoa. a little bit more time to get set up in these post plots and the well-timed utility, these Molotovs, have bought even more time, whittled even more time away off of this clock now. Device taking matters into his own hands, swings on the peak. Ooh, Ooh, looking for another. And Device pinned down inside of the site. Two players fall, leaving it onto Zipex. But if one man could get you believing for Astralis, it might be this one. They're on the bomb. Zipex oh, is done with damage. What? And he's going to take down all three. Zipex with a stellar clutch. And this is why we talk about this man in such high regard. So dependent in these situations. The 12th on the board for Astralis. And this Borup's man just knowing no bounds, knowing, you know, there's just no stopping him. Borup's just spinning, Harry. He's just circling on that bomb. 180 to 180, mouse pad to mouse pad. And somehow he still gets taken off of it. Great spray from Zipex. Always consistent with finding players in the smoke. Something that can be so difficult. Even if you know where the bomb's planted, you can reach that bomb from, from anywhere in its 360 radius. So, you know, I think Son put out a really good tweet recently for Gen G talking about how, you know, you can you can spin on the bomb from from considerably far away and how that's a bit of a problem in CSGO right now. Well, Borup tries it and Zipex doesn't let him get away with it. So a clutch for Astralis that will put their first T round on the board. That was four in a row for Heroic on the CT side before Astralis would break the streak, break the curse. But can they continue here or will it be a one and done? Well, it kind of needs to continue immediately for Heroic. That's the one downside of such a one-sided first half for Astralis and Cadian. Luckily enough, he's not really in the business of slowing down, is this guy. He's opened up with a man advantage now for the heroic side. And sat comfortably in a five on four, knowing the pressure. He's now residing with Astralis to right, try and recuperate this man advantage. Kadian's going to keep on holding this aggressive line into main. He do manage to get Yugi into the front line all alone. What's he able to do from here? He's very much pinned on in. One by one, Astralis get picked apart in that round there. A ninth on the board for Heroic. And a flawless one at that. Mm, Heroic using similar setups to uh, some of the ones Astralis used on this CT side, right? Running that double pop or at least, you know, a bait pop with support from the E-Box with Orps holding close T-Con. It's, uh, it's some nice setups from Heroic. They've been reading this well. They know where Astralis are coming from. Uh, and that, you know, is, is so important on train, a map where T's can really deny that information by just walking everywhere towards B. You don't have to, to run above those walls and let the CT's close pop here where you go. And Astralis, well, no uh, tricks in this round, just pistols. Quick one as well. Heroka found four kills in the blink of an eye. Borup with a double and pop. And Zipex, no bomb. And no chance. Might just run out into B and see what he can do. But Heroic, it should be ready for this. Even falling off of the train. But Nico's ready. 
And there it is. Bit of a dink. Got close, but no cigar for Zipex. And Heroic find double digits. So this game is truly competitive now. It's no longer an Astralis storming over a sleepy Heroic. The CT side has been put together in good form. Yeah, it's really starting to take shape, isn't it? And you can feel them getting back into the swing of things. Everyone's looking more confident right now on the heroic side. Device tries to line up this wall bag there. Doesn't find anything on the back of it. Early on, it's going to be Zipex, Dupree, and Device all slowly and silently walking over towards this B site of play. As we just saw there, Yugi, the one man who's kind of differentiating from that plan, he finds himself in Ivy. So Astralis, they've tried this strategy already, and it did have some pretty good results for them. This was the round the Zipex closed out in the 1v3, if you'll remember. Yugi coming in on this Ivy flank, four players into the B bomb site. Heroic, they'd almost rotated away. It looked like for a moment there, this little bit of utility that Yugi had thrown in had forced a full rotation, but they've gone back to B. Heroic have realized they've seen this one before. They know what Astralis have planned in this round. However, losing Nico early on at the B site does represent some problems. And it's a very aggressive Ooh. post plant here for Dupree. Now, this is going to force Astralis to have to take aggressive positions. And with so many players still dedicated nice. to the back line, it's a little bit risky. However, that kill there certainly going to help out. You've removed the pressure coming from Pop Dog. You've taken a five on three. At this point, Heroic, they probably just save, right? If it was a four on five, maybe Tessas can find something, but him not able to do that has left him with no other choice. That was a great change from Yugi in this round. Last time Astralis tried to run that same setup with Yugi faking Ivy, he committed to the take and he was the first to die in the round because Heroic knew he was coming, they killed him, and then they rotated inner and dealt with Astralis there. This time Yugi throws all his utility that keeps Heroic on that A bomb site, but then he rotates safe through spawn and comes in towards T Hall. Uh, he spots Tessa's come up pop, and instead of taking that fight, Yugi stops and hides in the toilets and makes the call for Zipex to come join him. Zipex walks up there, gets the kill, and Yugi never risks dying. And I think that's really smart. If you're Yugi in this position, you don't want to be taking every fight. You don't want to be looking to win every duel. Sometimes you just want to set up the best team in the world to do what they need to do. And Yugi getting that information and stalling Tessa's on the flank allowed Zipex to get the kill. That's, a, uh, that's an Astralis round, and that's them finding their second in the T-half done and dusted. Wow, Dupree, he's had enough. But the, so is Kadian. Response back with the AWP, and while well, Tessus is dead, so is Dupree. Let's find a 4-4 four four early, though, that's going to favor Astralis in this round. Well, trust a man like Zipex to play around in the pop dog smoke. What's he looking to do? The man of mischief. Set up in this position, and Borup did almost swing back in on a repeat. Now he's decided against it, and actually Heroic, they've grouped up heavily over at this B-bomb site. I think this is because, once again, Yuki is back in this Ivy position and really making his presence known. Now, every single time he's done this, Astralis have gone for this B-play on the back of it. In this round, maybe that's not looking to be the case. Zipex still just waiting in pop. The rest of the gang hiding in main. And I think there was a chance this A split could have worked. Ooh, However, dear. with Heroic now clearing these upper halls, ready to come in on a pop dog flank, Zipex, his kind of timing here is everything. And Nico, oh, he gets up nice and nice. close. He bides his time, and that's going to be two for one for the man in pop dog. Bear in mind, there wasn't just one player here, there was two. The other one, Borup, he's all the way in T spawn. He continued flanking. And Device, no idea, absolutely no idea that there's a man so deep. It's an 11th on the board for Heroic. I've got to say, I can't think of a time I've ever seen someone playing Trigger Discipline behind Zipex, right? Like having a kill, but not taking it onto, onto that dude. Like, that's that's got to be a good feeling for Heroic. Nice little read on the inner play. They know Astralis have gone quiet, but they're still putting enough pressure on A to warrant a B push and Heroic. You know, the risk of those B pushes is, is a solo player going and dying, right? But with two players, a bare minimum, you should be able to trade. And if no one's there, like that round, Heroic, they have such a big flank down pop and T-spawn. So really nice round for them. Going to find a, another victory. Keep Astralis on their toes. Every time Astralis have taken a T round, Heroic have responded in both cases. So not letting Astralis run away with this game, not even letting them, you know, warm up into this half, really. And this could still be a game that Heroic can take their map picking right now. 
a bare minimum because five rounds away from that very point and Fuller streaks are heroic. Full of money are Astralis. They've still bought up into this one. Device is back on the orb. We've never seen Yugi take an AWP only over Device. He's only ever had the orb with Device. So worth noting. Yeah, I mean, something that Device said in that little, like, interview clip at the start of the day when he spoke about how they were feeling about having to compete with Yugi is he, he just kind of said, like, I think now we're really going to have to rely on our individuals and, like, our yeah. individual talent. And I feel like we are seeing Astralis go for, like, a lot more of these hero plays than we necessarily would. And, and it kind of feels like they've had to bank on that a little bit more. Now, that's expected, you know? I think that's why Device said it. Like... <laughs> He was saying the whole time, I think the most important thing right now is to just be honest with ourselves and how we're going to have to play and how we're going to have to address these problems. So Astralis, this really is like a test of their on-the-fly problem-solving. They get out an IV in this round, but they're kind of trapped here behind back green. This doesn't seem as advantageous as it might look. And there's the proof in the pudding. Very, very quickly emerging. Magisk and Yuzi, Yugi both drops down. Going to go through this smoke and drops device. It's Zipex left alone in a 1v5. I wouldn't want to take away uh, a victory or even how many rounds Heroic are getting away from Heroic in this game. But I, I think one thing that is clear of this T side is it's showing how pivotal Glaive is in this position. I'm not saying Astralis are glossed per se, but some, some slow rounds where they're getting picked up by Heroic, they're getting pushed, they're not getting uh, the chance to really run their own executes. And it's Heroic, you know, Astralis get into their default and then Heroic dis just disrupt it with CT aggression. That's been this entire round. Look at it, a smoke push from Stown, Borob gets into main, the orbs have a field day. That's a great round for Heroic. And Astralis needs solutions, but they won't come with pistols. So only going to be another round win for Heroic, you would assume, with such low investment from Astralis. Although, talking of individual efforts, Harry and Deagles, well, they are certainly a good way to show off your individuals. Let's see if Astralis can get some picks here. Going to be flash into the pop dog. There is a man on the receiving end. This test is waiting, fully flashed, but with a smoke down, he doesn't need to worry about the tease. Device, meanwhile, has gotten a kill. He's actually pushed Ivy, and he's picked up an AWP as well onto Stout. He's been the top performer in Heroic so far, so this is a massive kill and a good bit of real estate, uh, estate taken from Device. They still need pop dog though, and Tessis is being a nuisance here. I don't know, man. This is scary, though. Even with the AK. Never mind. Never mind. They try and Goomba stomp him. They fall on down. They land on the head. And Tessez just tears it all apart. That is a slaughter. Yeah, that's a weird one for Astralis, right? They throw the pop exit smoke, which, which you know, or Molly, rather, which lands on the retreat. If you're running away from pop, you're going to get burnt. Or if you're playing in the pop, back of pop, it's a problem. That leaves, therefore, Tessez in two positions, outside of pop or right below the ladder. And Astralis, they don't even really check it. I mean, they look at it but all three of them look at it as they come falling down into his gunfire. So, yeah, definitely needed to check that one. Astralis, though, not a huge worry. They've been left with guns again. Device on the AWP, but this is it. This is a swing round. If Astralis don't win this, Heroic are likely going to take their map pick away. It's a very, very fast round. A real change of pace, and a change of pace is not going to change the results. Far up sends the packing. Tessas in with another. It's Device and Zipex left up in a two on four. They lose Device and with his fall, they also lose the bomb. Zipex has got a foothold in B, but that tiny bit of movement, that tiny bit of running has given up his position. Tessas has heard it, has called for players to keep an eye on the B bomb site as a result. Down is now how, how, holding down, sorry, the connector. Nico rotating in through CT. And for Zipex here, yeah, this is probably the end. They're holding, they're ready, they deal with him. 14 on the board for Heroic. This was a huge lead for Astralis at the end of the first half of play. They were set up, what, 11 to 4? And, uh, and now it's all turned sour, Hugo. Heroic, since moving on to this CT side, they've not missed a beat. And that's kind of Astralis' worst nightmare. You know, you lose your IGL and... Now you're expected to come up with all these solutions to the whole host of problems that Heroic have been causing. Yeah, 
now it's a fast one into B Canyon. He could get overwhelmed here. This could be another all for Astralis. A dangerous decision. And there it is. They've overwhelmed him. They run through the Molotov. Nico trying to stall from Apo. They've given away his position, but he's actually got the bomb under control right now. Astralis are getting aggressive, but really they should be getting passive. They need this package back under their hand, and Nico doesn't want to make it easy. He's been spotted, he's been cornered, device with that big kill, and now back in control or Astralis somehow in this round. They've got weaponry, they've got the bomb, they just need to get Stown out of oil. He's trying to push up. Molotov comes in. Oh, look at Device on the minimap, though. He's going back towards Popdog. He's going to A. Borup has spotted it. He knows. And he does take down a man on the retrieve on the receiving end. But Device has already got this bomb plant in. And with Yugi covering him with the AWP, this is a pitch perfect round for Astralis. Yugi's missed his shot. He's left Device alone. One on two for all the marbles. Oh dear. Device now is asked to do it all. The man to plant the bomb now is to be the one to detonate it as well. And he's going to wrap over here. Ooh. Hiding, fighting his time, does drop down, and now just Borup oh. to deal with. Device is going to answer the call. He wins out the 1v2, and he keeps Astralis in the game. 14 to 14 now. Welcome to your first taste of Astralis, you. You missed a shot in the two on two. Don't you worry, Device will clutch it out for you. Oh, what an excellent round for him. And uh, that's a great rotation for Astralis, right? To think that Nico had that bomb under control, to think Heroic were uh, like five on three up in, in an anti eco, four on three up, and, and, and with control over the bomb, and Astralis still win that round. That's the most Astralis round I've ever seen. Despicable scenes. And finding 14, they are just on the edge. Whoever gets two in a row here will be taking the map pick of Heroic on DE Train or over time to start off DreamHack Masters. Hey, I wouldn't be against it. We've had quite the uh, you know long series of Counter-Strike over these last couple of months. And well, hey, if that's what this game calls for, this Danish Derby, I'm all for it. Look at this from Heroic. This is a real switch up. They haven't been going aggressive. They've just been biding their time. And this round, they sent three players over to B early on. They want to try and take a man advantage. They want to try and strip one away. But be sure to bear in mind that, sure, you've got one guy from Astralis here. Where are the rest of them? They're down here in Ivy. They are starting to push on out. Testes is going to block that smoke. Gives himself a little bit of room to peek into main, but find a kill for his troubles. Borup trying to rotate into CT to get a handle back on this Ooh. Ivy position. Yugi getting caught on the wall there. Does still manage to get away. Man advantage lying with Heroic right now and lots of presence in CT. If you just tuned in, you might think this is the start of the round. Well, no. It's been live for a while now and this is where Heroic have been forced to as a result of this very aggressive ramp play early on in the round. Didn't give them the results they were hoping for. And as a result, they've conceded this A bomb site. So now they're set up to play retake here at A. Yeah, Borum is playing so passive. No one wanted to peek into an AWP posted on that site. Heroic want to play retake. And so a smoke down gives them room to move. But they also could be walking into a trap. Yugi's here on top of the trains. And even just let, letting go of Crouch would give him the view to back Ivy. They're going to boost. He's not seen it. He's not spotted it. Yugi can't tell. And Kane has gotten two kills from atop the train. It's just device in another clutch here for Astralis. He has to close it out. A one on three for Matt Point on Heroic's pick. One of four, rather, even less likely, even less realistic. And knowing he needs to save this orb could just be in the back of his mind. Heroic, they've tapped the bomb. They haven't stuck it yet, but it will be coming through the second time around. And Device, with no kills presented to, to him, he wants to save this orb. He can drop guns over as well. It's definitely worth it for Astralis, but that's a that's a horrible call to have to make in such a you know awful situation. A one of four. And to think Kadian gets two off of that boost as well, even after Magis has already been killed. Do hate to see it for Astralis. They're going to call out their final pause here in round number 30. Overtime or bust, overtime or inferno. Heroic have certainly thrown a twist in this tale. They really have. And now attack pause for Astralis and what could be their last tier on train if this round does not go their way. I think it speaks volumes as well. The fact that they've had to use all of them on this Astralis mm, side. A rare sight. It really is, especially in a matchup such as this. Bar 25 effective flashes at halftime, but none since. I like that.
I mean, that's T side, right? Like he's doing a lot of entry work. He's or, or at least you know setting Not his to team mention, up for entry those work. Those flashes over the top of T roof, mate. Yeah. They are just free stat yeah, pad flashes. Exactly. That's a good one for all you folks watching at home. <laughs> Throw those flashes over T roof. You'll Please. get like four around before your teammates have left yard, of course. Or while not. they're out there, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's all about the stats. That's what we're playing for. That's the aim of the game. Also, I love this. Heroic, they called in attack pause immediately after yeah. a start. That is El Clasico. I absolutely love it. it. Astralis have just sat there for 30 seconds and really hashed out what they're going to do, how they're going to approach this round. Everyone's getting pumped, everyone's starting to believe. And then Cadian and his bunch of boys just go, you know what, mate? We'll give it another 30. We'll let you just kind of mold over in this one. Molly straight into main. Astralis giving no free room to move. The Dupree's gone out. The e box smoke missed. It's not a problem. He's got a kill. He doesn't realize they're in Pop Dog. But Molly makes it look clear. But Tessis is hiding behind it. Good play from Tessis. Oh dear, the orb shot missed and be up, but that's giving Astralis a pick towards that inner site, and they will not stop. They will just take every opportunity they've been given and go full on with it. Yugi, another entry kill, and Astralis have taken B and a four on two. Overtime for our opening map is looking locked in, unless these two players on Heroic can stop it. Missed shot from Zipex. Zipex has given his position away, but the Molotov buys him time, and this one looks impossible. Oh, we're going to overtime, baby. First best of three, first map, and yeah. we get it. It was a 4-11 half from Heroic. There should have been no way that this one ended up in OT, but Heroic, they grind their way. They reach map point first, and it's Astralis coming back with one final round at the very, very end to get us here. And now we run it back again. Astralis, they've still got some fight left in them. It's the four usual suspects stepping up in spades. Yugi not having the best of debuts here. 9 and 17 on the scoreboard. Only man in single digits in the server, but there's still time for him to recover. And I do think it's important to remember, you know, with Yugi, first to first chance, it's going to be a bit of a slow burner. But Kadian, not looking to burn slow. He's looking to go out with a bang, and he's opened this round up with that kill onto Magisk. Yeah, Heroic have got to be feeling good about OT, right? They're the ones who pulled this comeback. They're the ones in the favoured side and with the momentum in their favour as well. So 11 rounds in the second half as Astralis found in their first. And Heroic with a man advantage into the bonus rounds. Three smoke down on the ramp. That's going to stop Astralis in their tracks. They look like they wanted to hit B. Well, now they've got to pull the brakes for at least a moment. Could deal with a pop dog player, throw some utility that way, but... It's not seeming to be the play just yet. They are going to actually change to the south side site. The bomb has remained in T-spawn on Yugi. Device with his AWP above Pop. Not the play to double drop here, I don't think. He's going to set up his teammate to take control, try and drop Tessas, who at the bare minimum has been finding kills in this position. Oh, that's a great drop, though. Halfway through the spray, he takes some damage, but he does get the immediate headshot. Big kill for Zip. It's put Astralis in pole position now. And, and now, because of that kill, they don't even need to hit Alta. They can just go B. And, well, while they don't know that, Heroic of Gamble with a double inner, this is a bit of a surprise. This is unorthodox from Heroic in a 4-on-4, four four, and Astralis won't go for it. They're not going to commit. They're going to bail out again, keeping us on our toes and walking into this two-man setup in the A side. Oh, and that's a big kill to find if your name just so happens to be Device. Now, Cadian will reply with one of his own, still Ooh. falling down the connector, but a missed shot has allowed this bomb into the site. Yugi trying to plug in those numbers, and he will get the bomb planted. Bora boosted up and over, and Yugi will find him in response. So it looks like it's going to be Astralis taking the first round here in overtime. Device is Ooh, even hounding down Cadian, and he's heard the scope. Device is going to win that one out. He's on a tear. Yeah. Device is coming alive in OT. That's what, you know, we, we've seen a thousand times so far for Astralis, but at a, at a moment so pivotal, really, because if they lose this map, you know, obviously it's still fine for the series. It's a BO3. We move to Inferno. But uh, that wouldn't be the precedent Astralis want to set, right? You can say, yeah, we've got to be realistic and like, yeah, we don't have our in-game leader. But I think Astralis still want to take every single win they can, especially this opening game versus Heroic. We'll see which Dane will win train in these coming rounds. Dupree's pushed very fast in the yard. Yugi's lost the bomb, though. Tessis again gets value from this pop dog position, and he spots the legs as well. He knows they're coming down the ladder, or at least attempting to be, as Astralis also split T-Con. 
look at down go, man. He's on a mission, and Kadian's even joined him. They've double flanked Ivy, but this has left them with oh. like no one in A, and Device is keeping an eye on the wrap round. Now Tessa's still putting up numbers and still a threat, not quite able to best Zipex. And this is where Kadian coming in late on this main flank is the second man. There go. Now, oh, has a lot of utility out of this position. They were ready for the first player. They were ready, forced down. But are they going to be ready for Kadian? He hears Zipex running overhead. Oh. He's holding for this peek back in. He's got the bomb outside of main. Dupree has cleared all the way through B, but this leaves him a long way away from this bomb. Kadian, the round is in his hands now. It's his for the taking, and Dupree has gone on quite the journey to get back to this A bomb site spot. Kadian still has this bomb to retrieve in the grand scheme of things, and Dupree fighting, looking for the kill, is gonna pick it up. Two in the round for Dupree. He wins the 1v1 to put a 17th on the board for Astralis. One away from going flawless here in the T side of overtime. Man, poor Tessas as well, right? He has such a big round in Pop Dog, dropping the bomb multiple times, doing so much damage to Zip, and then Dupree just throws a molly in Pop, which forces uh, Tessas up, and he, he just dies. He has his back turned. So all that round goes in vain for him. He's on 20. Astralis, they're looking for a similar number themselves, but Borum is going to make it easier said than done. He's found Dupree early on that quick T-Con play, the molly hitting Dupree. And the bullet certainly will follow. Heroic take the advantage in this final round of OT. They'd love to at least put one on the board. This could certainly be it. Trades again come through. It just shows the bomb and pop dog. Astralis, they want this out of sight and they won't be waiting around for it. Right now, KD is pushing B. He's going to have this info sooner rather than later. But Astralis are already out and about in the yard. Nico watching that cross. Styles drop the orb. The bomb follows. And now Yuki in a one on four with the orb posted on him. He hits a 98 damage thing through the wall onto Stown, but it still won't be enough for this round. Oh, but Yugi, he's got his weapon of choice in hand. He's been waiting all day to show us what he can bring to the table. Everyone watch this. This is Yugi in his essence. This is it. This is the round. And another tag onto Kadian. Molly to follow up. Kadian kind of looks to re-peak on the back of it. Now held back in pop. Yugi, first kill on the board. Still three to find, two of them. Floating around this connector position. The other is Kadian and Pop Dog, and Yugi was aware of this. Starting to swing out. Does retrieve the bomb. Has time to play with as well. There's a player in heaven and there's a guy at hell. Now, if Yugi deals with one of these, oh, ooh, is he going to be ready for the other? He's backing up into the man at hell, and Nico's going to solidify at the end of half time here at OT. Heroic, they managed to get one on the board. It's 16 for them, 17 for Astralis. A nice attempt from Yugi in this 1v4. I was believing, Harry. For a second, I was believing that. That 1D is so quick, and that was the player that really should have been winning the round for Heroic, but regardless, it will still be their round. They close it out at the end of the day and put one in their first half of OT. Now they need a T-side like never before. Remember, regulation showed only four rounds for Heroic's T-side, so it's quite the feat for Astralis to find two in OT. They just need two more. Heroic need to go flawless, and Astralis, well, they're not going to let that happen, are they? Device is pushed up with the AWP. Kadian's tagged from Ivy. That's just putting down a bit of a fight, but he'll receive even more damage. Pop is free if Heroic wants it, but they don't know that yet. They've walked into the orb, and Device has taken the first blood. Tess gets no say into this action, as he's at least taken up the position, but Device is rotated all the way around with this orb and swapped up with Zipex as well. Heroic, they're taking Ivy. They're looking to split this out of sight. And right now, Dupree's just pushed into Pop Dog. This could be problematic. Oh, Magic, he's got to nail this first shot. The smoke's gone down, not able to find anything on the timing. This is going to give a route through CT. Dupree oh. catches a man falling despite being blind. And even then, Device as well. Ring it out with another. Somehow, some way, Astralis, oh. they just might take this one back in their favor. However, that kill from Borup propels Heroic into this two on four, and it gives them a bit more of a fighting chance, a bit more wiggle room out in this A bomb site. No one pressuring it from Astralis. The only kind of form of defense we've got is Yugi boosted up and an immediate repeak available from Dupree in the Pop Dog, and he'll swing out, catches not one but two of the players 
That'll be both of the players, all of the players at this A bomb site. Three in the round for Dupree. And now map point for Astralis. They get us there in overtime, which, you know, very, very back and forth game. I didn't see Astralis, you know, once Heroic started get, getting it back in their favor. I don't know, man. It didn't feel like they were going to recover for a minute there. But now, since we've hit OT, everyone's been coming alive. They're back in the swing of things. And Heroic, they try and come in with a fast A play. It might be a fast play out of this map, though. They've lost a man early on. Tessa runs the gauntlet and comes to regret it. Yeah, Device, he's been so good in overtime. He's really come alive. And now he's looking to close it out. Just four kills away from that very point. Heroic, a man down in this round. They do have the orb, and Borup is pushed up. He's yet to be seen. This is a valuable position. He needs to look the right place, though. It's up on the train, and he's got the kill. Magist down. Device is going to pivot on the site, though. He gets a spot. He won't get the shot. Borup given a second chance at life, but he's walking into another orb. Neither one is safe. You've got to be careful with your Borup. Device has been taken down. Dupree trades the orb of Cadian. Still one left up in the hands of Yugi. Dupree is still on the site as well. Good kill. Traded immediately. And now it's going to be down to a two-on-two. With the bomb only just coming out of T-Con. Bar up and sound. Such an important 2v2 to keep the dream alive. And Stown has fallen at the first hurdle. Bar up now all alone. He does get that bomb planted, but that flash, oh. that has ended him. His whole game comes to a close there. It's Astralis taking.